Hey guys, welcome to another episode tutorial with me, Joseph Evans, author of the Secret Sequence books, The Phoenix Prophecy, The Ember Effect, Soulbound, and The Secret of Rain on episode. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at how to make a dressing game in episode. I've already created a few new outfits for uh, my character Loka. Uh, so we have uh, this one here, which is Loka Casual. Uh, this one here, which is Loka Fancy. And uh, this one here, which is Loka Smart. Now, the reason I've uh, named these new outfits in this fashion, where we have the character's name, then an underscore, and then the outfit name, is that uh, this is the kind of naming convention that Pocket Gems use uh, for their default outfits. And um, it's just kind of good practice to do this because what happens is if you have tons of outfits, which you probably will have by the end of your story, um, they'll be a little bit difficult to kind of sort through in this panel here. Uh, so by naming them like this with the character's name before it, uh, it just kind of makes it a lot easier to uh, kind of sift through them and find exactly what you're looking for in this panel here. So let's go over to our script and uh, as you can see here, I've already set up a little scene so we can get straight into how to make this dressing game. Uh, so uh, I've used this Angie Bed Red Day background and uh, I've cut to the second zone and uh, we have Loka standing in the center of the screen and she's facing right. Uh, so let's get straight into it. The first thing we're going to want to do when we uh, create a dressing game is uh, make a label. So we're going to want to write the word label in all lowercase like that. And uh, you can call your label anything you want. Uh, I usually choose to uh, name my dressing game labels choosing underscore outfit. So uh, let's write choosing underscore outfit like that. And I will explain uh, why we need to create a label uh, a little bit later in this video. Uh, for now, just kind of uh, trust me on, uh, on doing that. So what we want uh, Loka to do is to uh, think to herself, uh, what, sh what does she want to wear? So let's write Loka and then the think animation. And then uh, what do I want to wear today? And if you want your character to, instead of uh, have a speech bubble, uh, have a thought bubble, all you need to do is uh, put brackets around the text that they speak and uh, it will be one of those kind of uh, cloudy bubbles instead of the speech ones. So tap return twice. And this is where we're going to give the player some choices. So let's write the word choice like we did in the uh, second tutorial. Tap return, open up your quotation marks. And the uh, first option we're gonna give the player to choose is the casual outfit. So let's just put the word casual in here close the uh, quotation marks and then open up your curly brackets, tap return twice and close that curly bracket. So there's your first button and uh, within this button, if they click it, we want, first of all, we want Loka to kind of walk off screen and get changed. Uh, now you can have your character just simply get changed in front of the camera, but what happens is the, the new outfit just simply pops on them and uh, it just looks quite jarring. I, I would recommend having your character walk off screen for a second, get changed and then walk back into shot. So let's write at Loka walks to a uh, screen center in zone three. Now the reason she's walking to zone three is because we're currently in zone two. Uh, so we just want to walk in off screen to the right a little. Now, of course, if you're in zone one, which is the default zone, um, you're going to want to walk to screen center in zone two instead. So once she is out of shot, we want her to actually get changed. So the way to do this is to write your character's name after the at symbol. And then uh, you're going to want to use the changes into command. So uh, changes space into. And here is where we write the file name. So the file name for this casual outfit was loca underscore casual. And that's pretty much all we need to do for this uh, particular choice. So let's copy and paste this and just pop it here and then just change this to uh, smart copy and paste again and the other outfit I made was uh, fancy there we go so we've changed 
the text that appears in the button and we've also changed the actual file name in each one of these. So once the player has made that choice and Loka has walked off screen to get changed, we're going to want to have her walk back into shot and uh, we're going to allow the reader to choose whether they want to keep the outfit they've chosen or to try a different one on. So first of all, let's have Loka, uh, she walks to screen center in zone two, which is where our camera is currently placed. And then I'm going to want to put a pause for a beat here. And the reason for that is that we want the uh, reader to be able to just take a moment to have a look at the new outfit um, before any kind of dialogue bubbles pop up and obscure the, the new outfit. So we want to at least give the reader a few moments just to kind of admire their new look. So I'm going to actually use two pause for a beat here. One is probably enough, but I like to give the reader a little bit of extra time to uh, kind of admire what they've chosen. And then let's give them the option to change if they want to. So I'm going to write loca, and uh, I'm not going to put a think animation here because um, uh, sometimes it's a little bit overkill if you put too many animations into a dressing game. So let's just have her think in something like, uh, do I want to wear this one or choose something else. And let's add in a new choice. And the first uh, button that the user can press is going to be uh, choose this outfit. And the second button is going to be try something else. So if the player does like the outfit and chooses to keep the outfit, what we want to happen is for Loka to uh, say something like, yep, this is perfect. So I'll just put in the talk happy smile animation, I think. And if they choose to try a different one on, what we want to happen is uh, we want to send them all the way back up to the beginning here so they can start again. Now this is where this label comes into play. Uh, if we didn't have this in here, we wouldn't have this option and we would have to kind of like copy and paste loads of stuff and it would be really messy. So uh, what we want to do is send them right back up to this, to this label here. So the way to do that is to write the words uh, go to as one word and then space and then your label's name. So the label I created was choosing underscore outfit. So go to choosing outfit. So we'll send the reader right back up to this point and uh, we can start again. So the only thing to do after that really is to uh, have the character exit the scene when they're finished getting changed. Um, so let's write here at loca exits left. So let me just uh, save that and see if I've made any typos or any errors. Great stuff. That all looks good. Okay guys, so there is only one thing left to tell you before we preview this, and that is um, that if you try to save this uh, dressing game before you write this go-to choosing outfit here, it will give you an error. And the, and the reason is that um, the script doesn't like it when you have labels that are useless. And if we just had this label choosing outfit here without the go-to command sending the reader back to it at some point, uh, it would deem the label as a useless label and just kind of garbage in the script. Uh, so if you kind of get to halfway through here somewhere and then you try and save, uh, it is going to say that um, the label is not in use and it won't let you publish or anything like that. So um, just be warned that if that does happen, just ignore it and it will go away as soon as you write this go to command here. Uh, I know a lot of you have had trouble with this in the past, so hopefully this clears clears that up a little bit. So yeah, the only thing left to do now is to show you exactly what that looks like.
Okay, guys, that is it. I hope this has helped some of you. And uh, if this has helped you, please remember to uh, click that subscribe button. I will be super grateful. And uh, any problems, just uh, comment them down below. Uh, I will help you if I can. If, if I can't, um, feel free to talk amongst yourselves. I know a lot of you are great at helping each other. So uh, keep it up and I will see you guys in the next video.